Hi, I'm Liz and I'm on the developer relations team at Shopify. In this series, we're covering the basics of Shopify app development and the tools available to help you build them. In the last video, we covered Average, a tool used when building embedded Shopify apps. In this video, we're going to be covering the bread and butter of Shopify development, the Shopify APIs. Shopify has different APIs for different purposes. The Storefront GraphQL API allows you to build out customer's buying experience. This could be building out a completely custom website for an online store, creating a native mobile app, or adding a buying experience into a video game. The Shopify Partner API allows you to access data that's found in your partner dashboard. You can use this API to automate common tasks or speed up workflows. The API we'll be using today is the Admin API. This is the API most commonly used in app development. There are both REST and GraphQL versions of this API. This API allows you to read and write Shopify store data. This includes products, collections, orders, shipping, inventory, and much more. Make sure to review the API reference guide linked below to read about all of the functionality. We can use this API to add new features and extend the functionality of the Shopify platform. When making calls to the Shopify admin API, it's required you have a header on your request named X Shopify access token. This will be the access token that was generated for that shop. The access token will be generated when the shop authorizes your app to access its data in the OAuth of the install flow. Shopify has created API libraries that can make the process of sending the API calls easier. Both the REST and the GraphQL admin APIs have usage limits, but they're calculated differently. The REST API allows for 40 requests per app per store per minute and replenishes at a rate of two requests per second. The GraphQL API allows for a thousand cost points per app per store per minute and replenishes at 50 cost points per second. Most fields cost one point and mutations 10 points. Though under the extensions key in a response from the GraphQL API, you should see the actual query cost. Shopify was one of the first adopters of GraphQL, and we really like it. Going forward, you'll find most of the new additions and features to the admin API will be added to the GraphQL version. So that's the API we're gonna be using in this video. Let's open up the code for our app. In the last video, we added a resource picker so merchants could select their products. In this video, we're gonna be using the GraphQL admin API to first retrieve the products and then update them with a new randomized price. We're gonna create a new component called resource list. We're going to add a GraphQL query that would retrieve the products that were selected in the product selector. This query will get the products by the node ID. And next, we're gonna create a component that will use that GraphQL call and create a list of products in the UI with the return data. In our index file, we're gonna add a constant that will decide whether or not to show our empty state. And we're gonna add our resource list component that will show our selected products. We're gonna update our handle selection function to store the products that were selected by the product selector. Now, if we open the product selector and select some products, they will display in the UI of our app. Now we can write the code to update our product prices. We'll create a new component called apply random prices. And we'll add a GraphQL mutation that can update our product. Now we're gonna add a button. When the button is pressed, it will make GraphQL calls with all the selected products and update the price to a random price. Let's head back to the resources component. We're gonna add a constructor to keep track of our selected items. And we're going to update our list of products to make it selectable. And then add in our random price component. Now when we go into our app, we can select products with the product selector, select them and update the prices to a random price. If you look at the product in the shop admin, you'll see the prices updated there as well. To review the code used in this video, make sure you check out the link in the description below. For more information about Shopify app development, make sure to subscribe to this channel and review the documentation on shopify.dev. Join the Shopify Devs Discord server to meet fellow developers and ask questions.